to software, right, with hundreds of programmers. Um, what's common among those four areas is what? Writing programs. So just you guys are going to be falling in one of those four areas, we want to make sure that that one skill that you need to be successful in all of those areas, programming, that you guys are very good at. So we're going to dedicate those resources to those three classes, again, to ensure that you guys can program as well as anybody on the planet. Okay?
So you you know that you are you are on the pathway of the computer uh, computing and quantum computing and software engineering. So there are three departments there: computer science, software engineering, and peer development and information technology. There are some minor differences in between these three uh, among the three departments. You may know that in computer science. This uh, mainly teach theories and uh, theories okay. and software engineering. They mainly teach software development techniques and information technology. They mainly teach like there are other areas of like using information and using technology in order to organize and deliver uh, information or data. So there are some. Definitely, some uh, common fields and common aspects and common areas, but there are some minor differences. So, but at this point, I think in, during your past year, so you will not find any difference between the among the uh, three uh, departments. But what you may have, some of you may have some, some other colleges, other majors, that's not a problem. I know that this class is mainly to focus like few minutes. Right? This is the type of set program, uh, programming problem. Do any of you have uh, any idea what is meant by problem solving in terms of computing and programming? Yes. Okay, what well, other thing that so if you when you are when you are want to speak something, if you please say your name and if you please speak loudly, it will be help us to know each other. And it is really difficult for me to understand to remember all of your name and suddenly or in the past class or past weeks or past few days. But I believe you will remember my name. Right? So from the beginning you will remember my name. Whenever, if you see me around the campus, please say hi, and sometimes please share your name, so that if I share your name to friends, people, definitely I will remember your name, but I have got them to remember your name. I have about, about 275 students in four sessions. So clearly it is really difficult for me to remember your faces and your name, so but if you please help me by sharing your name. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's past semester. 
que o ele faz com isso. Mas ele não gosta de how. So how many of you have taken at least one uh, computing class, programming class, class yet? Only a few, right? Okay, so in this class, my expectation is that okay, my uh, my expectation is that you know nothing. I will start from zero. I will start from A. And we will uh, look forward to read to Z. Let us try it collectively in order to read our, our goal. Yeah? I cannot do it alone. So if you please, everybody help me. And all of you, if you please, be collaborative. Okay? And be respective to each other. And be responsive. To your uh, personal response, uh, <coughs> I think we will be able to resolve it. So my teaching for this philosophy is that my success depends on your success. In this class, I like all of you to get A. Okay, I don't have any problem if all of you get A. Okay, I don't have any problem because from the beginning I will give you hundred percent. Unless you give me any serious reason. Okay? But I have, you know, I, I told you I have about 300 students and I have other colleagues to collaborate with me. So let us find out a uh, or uh, some effective way to collaborate with each other to help each other. Okay? So I believe I have uploaded syllabus in this uh, course on D2, D2L. So how many of you have already got syllabus? Yep. Okay, so if you, uh, I'm still working on the syllabus, maybe tonight or tomorrow, uh, I will send you an updated syllabus, maybe I will email you. But uh, if you do not get uh, uh, my syllabus, I will, Please send me an email. And these are the like parts from the syllabus, and that these are that's just copied and paste from the syllabus. I don't like to go through each of the sentences and words and letters one by one. You please read, okay? Although I was asked to explain the contents and the and the policies. But I will do whenever need, needed. I will come back and then, but I believe you will uh, read yourself. Then it will help us too. Uh, so these are the important dates you know about this. I think you have got this from other classes. And this is the grading policy. And I want to talk about first year experience. So there is a website here. If you please go here, first blue here on this side. So here in this side, if you please go here and on the left tab, you will see that some there are some pseudo course and the submission guidelines, rubrics and resources and office hours. Mainly if you click over here, office hours, it should have office hours. So my office is in J E building, number, uh, room number G53. I have specified office hours over here on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 1.30. Uh, on 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And not only me, there are other colleagues and graduate assistants who are ready to help Okay? But you need to go there to get help. So,
please uh, sometime uh, visit this page and read some information. I want to take one more minute, a few more minutes to talk about my class. How the student like you about uh, three years ago, three two, three, three years ago? Uh, I got my undergraduate degree in mathematics, and I got my master's in computer science from the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. That is the oldest and largest university in my home country, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, our country is a small country. This is a small country. You may know or may not know about me. So this is a small country between India and China. I am from there. Then I have been an assistant professor, I mean a professor of computer science in my home at the University of Dhaka, Bangladesh for seven years. Then I came to USA in order to pursue my PhD. I got my PhD in mathematics and computer science education from the University of Nevada in Reno in 2000. Yeah. After that, I have been working in an NSA project and I have been pursuing my another second PhD in computer science at the University of Alabama. Then for the last three and a half years, I have been working in companies. So while studying and while pursuing my PhD in computer science, I realized that there are some gaps between academia and industry. Because in academia, professors have to follow guidelines and the uh, university syllabus. But, but, in the, but in industry, people in the industry, managers and the programmers and other owners, they do not have any guidelines. They have expectations they are, of their work to be done. So they don't follow any guidelines. So they expect that no matter how well you do, no matter where do you sit in order to start typing your code, whether you do it on the outside or in your bedroom or in your uh, anywhere, so they that expect that uh, your work should be done, your program should be done, right? That is their expectation. So they use some other tools and technology. But in, in, in academia, it's not possible to be used all of this. For the last three and a half years, I have gained practical experience how to develop software from scratch and how to uh, uh, implement your academic skills in industry. So I, I think I have enough experience to meet the gap. So I am here, hopefully I will be able to uh, help you to be a successful in your future career. Not necessarily that everyone will be a software programmer, some of you will be a professor, some of you will be a doctor, maybe, or uh, some of you will be a politician, no matter what you will be in your future. Uh, so our goal is to strengthen our brain, right? I have a question. So, do you know? Uh, what is the achievement of education or learning? Can anybody tell me in a short sentence? What is the achievement of learning? Or, and what is the goal of learning? Why do we come to school? Why, why do we are here? Why are we here? In the aspect of interior technology and computing, but in, you can tell me about general any practice, yes, any. To expand our minds in certain fields to get a clearer, better understanding of certain Yes, all of you are correct, but my, my understanding, our goal to come here uh, for 
uh, sitting education and do all of the hard work and hard things to get only one thing, like sharpening our brain. But sharpening our brain. Like I will tell you. Like for instance, if I if I push to the wall, right? If I push to the wall, what will happen? Yeah, if I push the wall, very hard. So then the wall pushes back, action and reaction. Okay, that is the Newton's argument, right? Okay. Okay, so I know that you know that if I push the wall then my thumb will be broken. Right? Very much. But because I don't have enough strength, right? I don't have enough strength on my thumb. But like if you uh, if I could have a rifle or pistol, if I shoot the wall, but the wall will be broken, right? So that means the wall, the, the, in, compared to my thumb, it is a bullet has more strength. Right? So our actually the goal is that we are doing hard work here, we are for whole life, you know, learning, and we are solving very hard and hard and harder problems, just in order to make our brain sharp. Nothing else. If you have a sharp brain. I'm expecting with that. Okay, if you have a sharp pain, then you will be able to solve any problem. No matter if you become a politician, you will be successful. You will be a successful politician, right? If you do business, you will be successful in your business. If you teach, if you, if you become a professor, you will be a successful professor. That's one thing. And another thing that I wanted to tell that what is our uh, final outcome, our achievement of learning? Final to me, the final achievement of learning is that after forgetting everything, like for instance, everyone, will, uh, all of you are here, or you are here, we completed on up to 12th grade, right? Well, thanks for that. But do we really remember everything? You learn in class, or you don't? No. So, whatever we remember, after forgetting everything, whatever we remember, that is our. Educational achievement, right? That we remember that the initials are hard to learn. But rule is that every action has a positive or has an opposite yeah. equal reaction. That is the thing that we remember. I took an undergraduate class in physics, before class, but I remember a few things. One did I got the four rules, right? Three rules, three rules. Sometimes you will forget. Like 20 years later, you will hardly remember that all of the problems. So that is the thing that after forgetting everything, whatever we can remember, that is our education. Then this is OL universal issue. And we like to, okay, we are not, we cannot uh, break that universal issue. But okay, in this class we will use our computational thinking in order to uh, solve real life problems, and we will learn how to solve real life problems. But this is not just only one class, we have to learn everything. This is the gateway, this is the starting point. How many of you have taken 1300? CLD 1300 in this semester. You know, another class, 1300. Has anyone here taken? There is an element. Are you taking that class 1300 CLE? I'm taking that class. I'm taking it. Taking it right now. That is actually a fundamental. fundamental process. Like we maybe you will learn Boolean and the number of details and how to figure the world something like that. I have published about uh, 20 books that, that are in my own, in my own address, Bengali, that are sold and that are used in Bangladesh and some, some part in India, in Calcutta, who speak English in Bengali. So, but I have
tell some pieces of my book, but I don't like to spend time to, in order to talk this. Very recently, I have published a book on Java programming. How many of you here uh, that you learned Java? Some, 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 you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Java. So in this class, actually our goal is to uh, pass in theory class, in later class, we will talk about uh, programming language independence. Okay, so that we will talk about problem solving techniques, but that will be uh, uh, programming language independent. That you can implement it, you will learn how to solve a problem using computer but not specifically in any programming language. I mean, there, are, there is an associate class, there are class, right? This class, there are actually multiple classes. We see, uh, we see Sharp, Java, and Python. Okay, you can take any, other, any of those classes, but our goal is to, in this class, we will talk about program, programming language independence. So that no matter what, uh, that class we take. Right. So if you take Java, if you are taking that class, you should take a that class. Right? How many of you, you do not have any that class? I think everybody is required to take that class, right? But this one? Yeah? I'm not, uh, I'm not, I should not tell you which language you should take. It is your, completely your size, and it is completely your advisor or uh, uh, there are other people's recommendations, but if ultimately you have to learn several programming languages. Yes. But if I am asked, if I or the your speak, okay, and if I was advised correctly, then I would check Java programming. Java would have to be my Because in ultimately uh, the next class, this class is uh, problem solving tool, right? Okay, that has object oriented concept. Oh, also in this class, it has object oriented programming concept. Does anybody have, have object oriented programming concept? An idea about object oriented programming? I do not expect that you would have object oriented programming experience or concept. But ultimately, in this course, we will learn about object oriented programming. So, you have an idea, sir? Um, is that where you need to code to create an object that has certain like, characteristics, like, for instance, you could create like, a dog class or something, and like, has breed and weight and like, age, and then you can use the various programs to code both of the objects? Yes. Okay, so can, can you please uh, send me the definition of an object? What is an object? Anybody, can anybody? You know, I am not an English speaker, okay? Originally, my uh, native language was Bengali. But your language is English, so please tell me, please, what is an object? A physical entity which exists. Yes. An object is an entity. Okay? An object is an entity. Can you give me some example of an object? Some example of an object. Next one. Anything else? Okay, anything else? Sorry? Show me here. Yes. Okay, anything else? Come. Oh. Anything else? Okay, these are the objects that we see and we can touch, right? Is there any object that is not visible? Like you don't think anything that is not visible as like no, like no. An abstract object which is a simulation. Okay, anything else? Yes, yeah, why? Right? So, uh, if all of, like, do all of you have, uh, all of you have, 
internet connection is somewhere, right? So you cannot see that it's a real ID, right? If it is gone, if it is the internet connection or mobile connection is gone, then it's a real ID, right? That is not visible, but then so that has some space. If it is not visible, but that has more space, then it becomes then you then then you should, right? Okay, so the whole concept of object oriented programming is that we will program in the same fashion uh, that in real life objects are used. Right? Like think about how this building was uh, architect, or how this building was built. Right? There was an architect who blindly, but who never saw this building structure, but he draw, he drew a structure of this building. Right? He did not have a physical building, but he just was saying that there will be wall over there, there will be roofs, and there will be rounds, and semi rounds, roof, and there will be wings over there. He just thought about it, right? And then he implemented it in the design. And then there are other kinds of engineers, civil engineers, and structural engineers. They actually implemented as an architect's thought, right? Same thing. Same way we programmers implement uh, uh, or solve our real life life problems using computer programming. Right? We will talk about that in object oriented programming concept later. Okay. So that what, what I am talking about. So in this class, our expectation uh, is to learn and increase our problem solving skills. And not only in the problems of this skill in real life, we will know how to think, how to do that computationally. Or, or that means how a computer uh, solves a problem. For instance, we know, uh, I'm sorry, maybe I forgot to bring. Uh, Everybody we know how to solve problems, right? For instance, uh, we know how to add 25 plus, let's say, uh, 25 plus 15. Everybody we can know it, right? We know that there are some rules and some uh, algorithms in order to solve this problem. For instance, if you, uh, if you are asked to add uh, 25 and 10, you are not supposed to write 25, 15. So even you are not supposed to add 15 here. Like one, seven, five. That is the front part, right? So we know that there is a specific algorithm, right? There is a specific formula that we are doing align the first number with the second number, right? If the first number is 125 and the second number is even 15, then we have to align right and right and right. And then we have to add. So we need to implement that kind of strategy while thinking computational. Right? For instance, I have two pens and a hand. Two hands, right? So if can anyone please volunteer me? Anyone? So, I need some more. So, you have to use only one hand. Okay, please. Keep that your other hand. Okay, only one hand, you have to one hand. Okay. So, you are supposed to exchange this pen. Okay. You will take that pen and you will, and you will take her pen. Okay. But you, there is a condition, there are some conditions. At a certain, no, at no point, you will be, you will uh, catch hold two items. Okay? And you cannot throw. You cannot set on the slide, okay? On the, yeah. Can you try? 
No? No, 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 you're not supposed to do that, right? Are you supposed to do that? I told you at any moment. You cannot hold two. Okay? Can you do another time? Is it possible? No. It's not possible. Because at any certain time, even for a millisecond, he has to take both, right? Can you tell? Huh? No. Sorry? Yes, can you try? You are not, uh, there are some conditions that you cannot take two at a certain time, you cannot fly or you cannot put in another place. Yeah, No. Maybe she you can have to give on any one area, you can have to hold the ball together at a certain time, you can have to No, but you can have to say that you can have to put any You can have to say that you can have Yes, it can be done. Yes. That is for swapping. Swapping, right? It's for swapping, right? Expensive. So there is a swapping algorithm. So the swapping technique. That you have to ask a third party. Right? You have to you need another temporary location. Right? You need to you need another temporary location. Or temporary place will That place can be a uh, that can be an underground or a stable or somewhere else. Now you want to volunteer? Okay, now if now if she becomes a temporary placeholder, can you please uh, send me the of that? Okay. Okay, so then now if she becomes a volunteer and it is possible, right? Okay, then if she gives it to her and if he gives it to no no. Yeah, then it's done, right? Condition are mixed. Right? She has only one face at a certain time, no two face at a certain time, right? So this is the like traditional swapping or extending algorithm. We need a third place or a place or a temporary location in order to keep the first like if you have this for instance not only pen, right? If you have two numbers, right? If you have two numbers, like what is the two? So like if I have two numbers like x equal to 25 and then another number y equal to 15, then if I want to extend this number, that means if I, my goal is to extend uh, x with y and simultaneously y with x, so I need to know swapping. Then we need to think this computationally. Computationally means how computer works. Computer is an electronic device, right? It has no life. But it understands something. Right? It understands something that is called B, right? That's what B. Have you heard about B? It means binary digits. It means binary digits. And there are two binary digits, 0 and 1. Okay? So, how an electronic device or how all electronic devices work? All electronic devices run under electricity, right? All electronic devices run under electricity. The power of electricity. So, this is to me, to me, like personally, I think the electricity is the base and for most. Uh, development in the human If there is no electricity, nothing. Yeah. That's power. So all electronic devices, they run under electricity. And electricity has like two states, right? One, which is the one of the largest. And the fans, because it has two space ones. Like, like we, we know that uh, electric switch, electric 
two step have only two step, right? Walk or one, right? Two step walk means zero, and one means number one, right? So it is it is two step. So the electric switches have only two step, either zero or one. There is no middle, right? No middle. So all electric devices work with the power of electricity, and electricity has only two step, right? Either zero or one. Or one, or over one. So we 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 have to think, we have to remember that concept that all of our devices, all electronic programs, the computers, that work with that philosophy or that strategy, that electricity contains so zero or one. Similarly, that in both our languages, uh, when we say variable, we will first learn about this later. A variable can contain can contain only one value at a time. Only one value. There is no way that it can contain two values simultaneously. Okay, if, if I have a variable, then if you replace it has a value, and if you replace it with another value, then the previous value is gone. You will only be uh, holding the updated value, one value. This is why it was not possible. Like same thing, like we cannot hold two tabs, two pages at the same time. Right? So then, then the only one will be for So that means so that if you want to swap this X and Y, so then you need to go with another figure, another placeholder. That means we say Z, for instance, Z. If we put Z equal to X, right? Then x equal to y and then y equal to z. So this will be a set. So if you put z equal to x, then z will be 25. And then if you say x equal to y, then x will be 15. And then if you put y equal to z, then y will be 25. So there you are getting a set. This is how A very simple and well known algorithm, swapping algorithm works. So we will learn in this class our expectations are that we will learn problem solving techniques. And we will increase our problem solving techniques computationally. Computational. Okay, so we will increase our problem solving skills, we will solve real life problems with computer programs. And we will start learning at least one computer design. So whatever we learn with it in check no matter, actually programming languages are like very common like human language, right? My native language is Bengali, your native language is uh, most of your native language is English. Some of you have other other native language, mother language, right? But there are some common words and common patterns of human languages, right? Almost in programming languages, you will see there are 80% or at least 60% common patterns in programming languages. So it is easy for you if you learn uh, at least one programming language and if you pick up, try to become master in one programming language. Then you will learn secondary programming languages, tertiary programming languages. Yeah, I can tell you, but do not uh, keep it recorded or take it otherwise. If uh, I have, I know a number of programming languages. I have authored book on C programming languages. A C programming language. When I was a student, I was a graduate student. I learned, uh, you know, I forgot. Quarter. Our professor, my professor, he learned Quarter in 1960. So he taught us quarter programming language. Quarter is formula translation. Formula calculator programming. We may have not yet that programming language. Okay, then I learned Q that thing. Then I learned how to visual that thing. Then in academia I learned C, C, then I learned Java, Python, C sharp, Kotlin. There are three other languages that start with C programming language. But I, I told you there are common things, but there are some uncommon. Yeah. But if uh, you 
want to learn more programming, you want programming like this, I will recommend that. Okay? And you want programming like this, but it, it, it means the reality is that different companies and different environment uses different programming language. And same thing can be implemented to different multiple programming languages. Something that is easier in one programming language and is difficult in another programming language. Java is a um, uh, Java is more popular because of platform independence. Platform independence means you are know, using Mac, right? Some of you are using Mac, right? Like computer, Apple computer, and some of most of you use Windows, right? So uh, Java has the ability. Yes, to run and program is one user the Windows or Mac or other Linux or Unix environment of the system and to run in another program. Because Java is uh, uh, compiled equal. Java is both interpreter and compiler compiled. It has both interpreter and compiler together. Do any of uh, you have an idea about Compiler or interpreter? Compiler or interpreter? Interpreter or compiler? You have that? Okay. Do a Google search. Everybody please do a Google search about interpreter and compiler. What in this class? It is after the class. Yeah, interpreter and compiler. You should learn to know this in your, if you have taken the uh, AP computer science or any other computer science class, you guys. Yes. First of all, my name is Kyle. Um, it basically checks the syntax and the grammar of the program. Yes. Yes. Interpreter is that like for instance, if I speak, if I speak in my mother language, and if I do not understand your language, okay. But if I need to communicate with you. How is it for you, right? It's sometimes we call it interpreter. That interpreter knows both languages, right? Both my language and your language, right? When I speak with interpreter with my language, and he understands my language, and then he then he interprets or translates that thing to your language. Right? So this is the way the interpreter works. And the interpreter is, is a less powerful. And it is needed to be with the program all the time. And the compiler is more powerful. Okay, the compiler is more powerful. Once we compile the whole program, it is not required that the compiler will need to be stay with uh, needs to stay with the program all the time. Once you compile it, you will give you an EXE file, an executable file. You can run that executable file in the uh, help of the compiler. That is the basic difference between compiler and interpreter. Most of the programming languages like C, C, they are compiler, they are compiler uh, translate. Some other programming languages like Java is, has both compiler and interpreter. So then the question is that if compiler is better and then why do we need interpreter? Why do we need both? Right? In order to implement language or platform independently, Java has used both compiler and interpreter. So that if you program in one environment, in the Mac environment, and if you want to run there in Windows environment, you can do it. Or vice versa. We will learn this in our class. So I'm not going to uh, read aloud all of the things, but uh, now it is time. Sorry, I took a long time that I was speaking. Now it is time to read your file. Now please tell me about your expectations. If you please monitor and if you please write over down, then I'll be happy. Or if you feel shy to write down, then I have a piece of paper you can write over here. But I would welcome to stand and 
tell us about your expectation. So you can ignore expectation from me or your parents' expectation from you or from me. So, right? Yeah, can you please tell us? What do we expect from this class? What do we expect? We are like, for example, in this class, we will next four months to ten months, right? We will get, you will spend seven hundred or thousand dollars, and you will spend more things over time. And your parents and your guardians and your friends and family members, they will be paying, either physically or financially or something like that. So everybody will be satisfied. So please tell us your Yes, sir. Can you please write it down? For future reference, that I can hear everybody. Anyone else? Yes, please turn up and write it down for me so that I can, I can uh, remember the future and then I can. Anyone else, please? Don't feel shy. Don't feel shy, please. Don't need to be anything. And you can expect me anything. You can, maybe I'm not, I cannot care of it that I will be able to put to you a bit, but I will be shy. I would request, I would request, huh? is there anyone here that has uh, any fluidity or mind uh, that you may draw this class? You are testing this class. Okay, let me go to the past class. And if you don't like it, then I'm stuck. Is there anyone that this kind of administrator? You? Okay, thank you for telling me the truth. Anyone else? You have administration? Okay. Okay, if you have that administration, okay, please wait. Someone will go to class. Okay? I believe you will change your mind. Okay? I believe I will be able to change the motivation through computing. I know something even that you do not know. But, at that, but, but I know, I don't know anything. Right? Some of you here that know more than me. Okay? But I, my expectation is to fulfill your expectation in, based on this. And basically, you know, who is going to speak to you? Yes, 
I'm wondering
because there are two advantages. You will learn all of the concept, basic concept of object-oriented programming, as well as you will be skilled in, uh, for, you will be ready for uh, industry in your future. So I know and I see that you have, some of you have the expectation that are beyond this portion, beyond the cinema portion. But if you are your winner and if you are with silent days, you will not be possible. And even some of you feel hesitant, right now if you bring your idea and expectation and Later, we will try. Okay. But in order to, uh, if you ask me to do something else beyond the syllabus, we you have to get extra effort and time, and I have to do extra effort and time. I'm not sure that I will be able to do that, but, but collaboratively, if we work collaboratively, we may be able to do it. So, uh, if so, so this is why I like to, I attach some additional and in advanced instructional and resources. These are optional, definitely. You are not required, you will not be uh, tested in your test of which you will not be covered. Okay? But this is optional. If someone would have the goal to go to uh, internship in next year, if there is anyone here who goes to the internship in next year, for instance, yes, you know, and then Anyone else? You are ready to ask. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, and anyone else? Yes. Okay, so if you have that intention, you should go to uh, an internship, or go to work, or do some part-time job, then I would recommend you to participate with me and in this additional and advanced uh, instructional and resources. That I, actually I maintain something is left. Okay, so class is formal class is over. If you want to leave, you can leave, but I, for the next five minutes, I want to talk about my additional uh, ad uh, and advanced research uh, resource uh, uh, stuff. So, but please, if you leave, please leave silently. But I would request you to stay here three months. Okay, so that's two. So, okay. So, I, I made there some YouTube channel and this, uh, I have some blog and I have uh, Facebook page. That is called CSIP Report. Here, please, computer science and information technology education report. So I have, so if you go to that YouTube channel, you will see that I have uploaded many uh, YouTube videos. And time to time, I will upload more videos. And if you join with me, you will see this forum. You can open online. Okay? You don't need to pay for it. Okay? But if you give me a third way, that will be my best in order to do that. If you go here and then if you subscribe to the channel or if you join the class, then you will be able to learn something more than this class. And that will be needed in order to be successful in this course and in your future, in order to be in your future. Maybe there is a one line resource. Mm -hmm. I will I will update.
Yes, you can take picture. I will, I will, I will share with you. So can you share with other slides? If you go YouTube and then search for CSIP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 